last week, Mark Zuckerberg said that Facebook would allow lying in political ads. Uh, and he made it clear uh, he is not going to take sides in the presidential election, at least not publicly. But uh, Bloomberg's reporting indicates that he has been in touch with Pete Buttigieg's uh, campaign and he's taking an active role in staffing Buttigieg's campaign. So uh, let's go to the details on this again reported by Bloomberg. Earlier this year, Zuckerberg sent multiple emails to Mike Schmuel, Buttigieg's uh, campaign manager with names of individuals that he might consider hiring. Uh, campaign spokesman uh, Chris Meager confirmed. Um, Priscilla Chan, Zuckerberg's wife, also sent multiple emails to Schmuel with staff recommendations. Ultimately, two of the people recommended were hired. Yeah, uh, look, I think this story is nuanced. I actually don't think that that's that big a deal. Um, so, if somebody asked me for recommendations for a campaign, I'd give it, mm -hmm. and then it's up to them whether they hire it or they don't hire it. So, uh, now also uh, further defense of Zuckerberg in this case is that they went to Harvard together, so they didn't know each other at the time. They actually wound up meeting later, but Buttigieg was friends with two of Zuckerberg's. Uh, roommates and they have a bunch of mutual Harvard friends. So, you know, if they are loosely friends or have relationships with one another, okay, that's even more of a case of I don't mind if he has recommendations for his presidential campaign. And then the other defense of the Zuckerbergs I agree with is they say that some folks reached out saying, do you know anyone on the Buttigieg campaign? Because I'd like to work for him. So then what are you supposed to do if you're Priscilla Chan or, or Mark Zuckerberg? No, I'm not gonna do that. I mean, I, you could say, hey, out of principle, I shouldn't do that, etc. Yeah, that's fine. But I, I don't, I, I see why he'd wanna pass him on. So what now. I'm, what I'm more worried about though, Jenk, is influence. So if you think, all right, well, the workers went to them and they wanted that intro, I guess that's one thing. But this does not speak well of Buttigieg's campaign because we know how much Facebook and social media influences elections. Mm -hmm. We know that. Mm -hmm. We and, and the decisions they make about the algorithms and which stories actually make it to your feed. I mean, there's just been a number of things lately with Zuckerberg that have concerned a lot of people, myself included. So there's the fact that they hired the Daily Caller of all places to do fact checking. Hilarious. Come on, come on, you guys. And then he says, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna allow the, the lies and the political ads. Okay, fine, I mean, to be fair, the political ads that you see on television also include a ton of lies. The political ads that you see on various online platforms uh, include various lies. I mean, Donald Trump advertises on YouTube. I've seen some of those YouTube ads and he lies. So I guess you can make the case that, hey, Zuckerberg isn't any different from all these other platforms, but nonetheless, Facebook is a place that people rely on for news, which is a complete and utter disaster. Yeah, I have two different systemic issues with this. One is how the Facebooks of the world interact with politics. I get that it's a necessity, and but at the same time, all of it is gross. And and to be again fair to Facebook, and I guess I'm the only one left on the planet doing that. Uh, and here I'll give an editorial note that uh, Facebook is a partner of ours. So if you want to think that I'm crooked because of that, fine. But I'm letting you know ahead of time. Um, but uh, so Zuckerberg has given to Paul Ryan and Nancy Pelosi. He's given to a lot of different politicians, uh, Republicans and Democrats. Why? Because this is the corrupt system that we have. So that's why I'm saying I'm not blaming Facebook in particular for it. But all the companies have to go bribe both Republican and Democratic leadership. They're legalized bribes now. And they have to just be like, okay, now remember, don't regulate us. And then there's the question of did Facebook bribe them enough? And, and, and an argument, a real good argument is that they didn't. That other tech companies give a lot more to politicians and Facebook was not doing that. And that was a big mistake. So they're in the crosshairs now because they didn't do enough bribery. <laughs> so. Our system is so broken, so corrupt. Why is Zuckerberg giving to anybody? Why Why do we have politicians who take money from billionaires for what? For their health? For the general welfare? No, obviously Zuckerberg's giving so that Facebook will benefit. Yes. That's super obvious, but yet the Supreme Court and the corporate Republicans and the corporate Democrats say, "Oh no, 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 no. No, there's no corruption here. I don't know what you're talking about. No, they all of these billionaires and all these corporations, they give us money because they care so much about the country.
I mean, that is just so laughable and pathetic. So Zuckerberg participates in that. Actually, he's given less donations recently because of some of the controversies. So in this case, it's not a donation, it's just, I'm telling you, this story to me is the least problematic of all of these issues. So look, I disagree with you. And the reason why I disagree is yes, money influences politics. There's no question about it. But guess what else influences politics? Information. And so you have two people who used to work at Facebook. Obviously, they're close enough to Zuckerberg that they feel comfortable going to him and asking for this intro. He gets this intro. And you think that these two people who are now working for Buttigieg don't still have connections over at Facebook? But everybody right. has connections everywhere. So, you know, I, I just, if we're scrutinizing the employee track records of everyone on every campaign, you could do that till the cows come home. So I don't think that they're particularly necessarily going to throw the policy in favor of Facebook. Now you want to be concerned about Buttigieg's policies. Now let's go to Buttigieg instead of Zuckerberg for a second. Again, this is not particular to Buttigieg in that this is all allowed and it's part of the system. But in, in Buttigieg's case, he takes a ton of money from Silicon Valley executives. They, a lot of Silicon Valley has maxed out to Buttigieg. Mm -hmm. And then Buttigieg says, well, I don't know about breaking up to Facebook and the Google. I think exactly. that I think that maybe our, you know, we uh, monopoly, I'm concerned, because Buttigieg always does that double talk, right? So, so I'm concerned about monopolies, but I'm also I'm more concerned about monopolies in other industries that haven't donated as much to me. Um, <laughs> okay, he leaves that last part out. And really, which industries do you want to break up? Well, I mean, we'll get to that later. He ain't gonna break up no industries. He's not gonna go and be concerned about monopoly power because all those folks gave to him. And so it's, the system is totally broken. So it is, to me, Buttigieg is the establishment candidate. No question about it. And At this point, the jury's come in. And so, look, if you're looking at Zuckerberg and Facebook, they, for them, acceptable thought is actually fairly similar to what a lot of the mainstream media thinks. It ranges from John Kyle, that's the former Republican senator from Arizona, that Facebook has hired to determine what's fair and not fair on their platform. John Kyle? Yeah, John Kyle, because mm -hmm. he's an establishment Republican, so he's A OK. -okay. To Pete Buttigieg, an establishment Democrat. That's your reasonable, acceptable thought. Anything outside of that, no, nope, unacceptable. So Buttigieg is one of the most right wing candidates in the Democratic primary. So Facebook's like, yes. And it's also worth noting or reminding everyone um, that based on TYT Investigates and Jonathan Larson's reporting, uh, Pete Buttigieg was influenced by his campaign donors when he was running for mayor of uh, South Bend uh, to fire the uh, town's first African American police chief. Yeah, right. later so, it changed it to a demotion when uh, he got a lot of blowback, but then went on to uh, you know get rid of most of the uh, African American uh, African Americans in the police department. A, a, a shocking number. Just read the stories on tyt.com. Now finally the local press is covering it and going, oh my god, oh so all, it turns out that there was systemic racism in South Bend Police Department, huh? <gasps> yeah, well you know maybe you should have been on that case earlier. Anyway, um, so. Meanwhile, Buttigieg's competitor, Elizabeth Warren, is saying maybe we should break up Facebook. So that's why I understand this story, while I happen to think it's fairly normal and relatively benign in the context of other stories we've done about the campaigns getting intertwined with corporations, is particularly problematic because Buttigieg's competitor is saying let's break up Facebook, and Facebook now is helping Buttigieg make sure that Warren doesn't win. Mm -hmm. So, and Buttigieg now is totally real. I mean, in Iowa, new poll out, he's at 13%. He's in third place, he's past Bernie Sanders. Um, the huge story coming out of that poll is Kamala Harris has lost 13 points. But the reason that's relevant is because it looks like the establishment donors, uh, media, and a lot of those backers have decided it's not Kamala. We thought it was gonna be Kamala Harris, it's mm -hmm. not. They're all worried about Joe Biden. They're worried about him in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. So they've now said, okay, we got it. Our boy, our guy is Pete Buttigieg. And so it'll likely be Buttigieg versus one of the progressives. And, and so that's why all of these institutional players now backing Buttigieg makes a big difference. So you take that information, you do whatever you want with it. Buyer beware. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. 
you'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.